it's Claris, and we have another painting session um, for our Sunday Live today. I'm just going to give it a few minutes so people can trickle in. And yeah, so um, this is what we have. The Rose of Sharon is what we were doing this week, and um, these are just the practice sheets from earlier on. And then we ended off with this being the final. So today we are going to be focusing a little bit more on painting these. I found them a little bit tricky to do just because they've got just just because of the flower it's got depth inside as opposed to like a rose or anything so to kind of achieve that uh, happening was a little bit tricky for me so let's just see what we can do today with our loose style of painting because you know me I don't like to sit there and kind of paint away for hours on end I just like to have the therapy session and the satisfaction of seeing the colors blend in and then create something pretty uh, people are trickling in. Hi, Ritu. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. Uh, I have my... Yes, everything's open so I can see you guys messaging me. Hi, Susan. Uh, yeah, so we'll be continuing with this. If any of you have tried this uh, tutorial from this week or last week, what did you guys think? Did you like it? Um, do you have any comments? Was it easy? Was it hard? Are you excited to do these again today? Uh, let me know. Hi, Julie. Hi, Brittany. And hi, Yay. <laughs> That's a fun name. Uh, oh, and before I start, I just wanted to tell you guys about my third chapter that I posted on Graphy uh, this past week. And it was on doing these cookies. So um, if you guys haven't had a chance to download Graphy and check it out, you totally should. It's a great app. Uh, it pretty much allows you to learn on a bunch of different topics. So it's not just watercolor that's on there. Um, and yeah, it's like a digital book. So in a vertical format. Anyways, uh, going to move on back to our Rose of Sharon's because I want to try and keep this session about 30 minutes so we are not toiling away for too long and then we can enjoy the rest of our Sunday. Um, let me see if anyone's saying anything before we start. Hi, Kathy. Julie, I'm glad you're looking forward to this. Rithi, you're gonna try tomorrow? Yes, you totally should. Thanks, yay. Um, Paula, hi Paula, hi Zanette. Um, Pathfinder 616, it was helpful. I'm glad you guys found this uh, tutorial helpful. Uh, the video got like 1400 views in the last three days. So I was quite taken aback thinking, I didn't know people were looking to do Rows of Sharon's. I, I, I guess it's a popular flower. Hi, Janet. And hi, Yasmin from Mexico. Um, hi, Julie, glad you're back. All right, fabulous. Okay, so I think we can begin. Um, hi, Sheila, welcome. From Ontario, fellow Ontario person, yes. <laughs> hi, Susan, okay, hit the thumbs up. Oh, thanks guys, yes, please do hit the like button because apparently it does boost the video as well. So, all right, let's begin. So I have my Canson paper ready. I'm just gonna tell you what supplies I have. Um, for my brushes, I'm going to be using my mop brush in the one. You can also use, um, you can use the Princeton Neptune um, f if you don't have a mop brush. And then I have the Silver Black Velvet in the 8 and the 4. So these are my brushes that I'm going to keep on standby for today. Um, for colors, for the... For the stem in the center, I'm going to use a blend of the medium cadmium lemon and uh, this I believe is golden from, uh, from St. Petersburg. Then for the leaves, I'm going to be using the yellowish green and I will be mixing that in with uh, 
with the Mars Brown that I have here and it'll give me like a nice warmer green uh, and then finally for the actual colors itself I will be using a combination of the violet with um, with the Matter Lake Red again from St. Petersburg and uh, I might just end up using some of the violet to get some like purple mauve I don't want it to look too similar to what I've already done on here but you know what I kind of just go with the flow sometimes I plan stuff it never quite goes as I plan so uh, let's just see what we come up with I have my palette here from what I had previously used for the uh, video from the week so I didn't wash it off I'm gonna use the same colors or draw from the same area and uh, yeah let's begin I'm just gonna quickly look at uh, the comments before I begin is graphy for phones I couldn't access yes Pamela graphy is for phones and the whole idea for graphy is because it's a vertical uh, video um, you're able to view the chapters by just swiping up so you just see the whole video in chapters per se or like pages of a book hi Deborah hi Zanette yes I really like the idea of putting out a video a short video having you guys practice and then Sunday we have our own session together and we can kind of elaborate on what we did what size is my paper Susan so this is actually from my 9 by 12 inch watercolor pad but I just cut off a little piece for practice earlier and I have this square area right now so I'm not quite sure what size it is um, because I cut cut off a little bit of it from there hi Jill welcome uh, yes <laughs> my my seashell it can be can work and sometimes it, it doesn't just because there isn't a lot of compart like area to mix stuff so blends in but you guys use what you are comfortable with using for mixing uh, colors all right so let's begin enough rambling um, I'm just gonna get some color and mix some more that I have on here right now um, I'm mixing some of my red the Matter Lake red which I already have there but I'm gonna just put some more on here and then I am going to get some of my violet right here and I'm mixing that in and I have like a nice deep purple color happening here and I have the Rose of Sharon's for reference as well on to on the side here so the, they're they're all kind of dying in my garden now I guess the season is done but I found one that's like semi open and it's kind of pretty so we could probably use this um, as a reference. I just don't know how well it's going to turn out. So wish me luck. Here's trying um, to do this live with you guys. All right, so I'm going to use my number one mop brush. I just like that it gives me more rounded edges as opposed to the, the round um, pointed brushes that we have with silver black velvet. And um, so we're going to start off with using with creating the back petals first and then we'll do the outer petals over here. So let's just see how that turns out. The purple I mixed Brittany was the violet from uh, St. Petersburg. And uh, thanks Artie. <laughs> Such lovely compliments. Hi Anita, welcome. Uh, yes, Zanette, I think Rose of Sharon is cousins to hibiscus. And I have a tutorial for the hibiscus out there too. It's just different from this one. All right, starting off, let's start now. Uh, so I'm just going to create a flower over here. And then we'll probably do one over here and have it twirling this way. So if I ever want to digitize it or use it for other projects, I have it as a nice pattern. Or we could just do sporadic all over and just practice the flowers as we go along. All right, starting off for real this time, I'm going to press down my brush 
and pull down and trying to leave as much white space as possible in between. I'm going to create my first petal and then I'm just dipping the tip of my brush in water and then I'm going to go back in and create another petal. Oh, this was a bit too far down. My mistake here. But I'm trying to leave a lot of white space in between as you can see and I'm trying to not have it go down all the way to the center because then I want to use uh, my number four and get some of that red which is in the center of the uh, petals in there so it bleeds in nicely. Let's see how that pans out for me. And then we'll do one more on this side here. So pushing down the darker color to the center. And then finally we have this protruding one on this side. So notice uh, I've been dipping my brush in water to kind of get a gradient of the purple. Um, and then that just adds a little bit of an extra two dimensional depth to it. So I'm getting, using my number four, I'm going to get some of the red and I'm just going to quickly add a couple of strokes on the inside wherever I can. And I'm pulling it down and it's giving me a nice blend with the purple and the pink. So I like how this is turning out. It's kind of nervous to start it at first. Um, and now that I have the light version, I am going to add this additional step that I did not do in the video. What I noticed is it kind of has a fade in the center. So I'm going to add an additional darker red in the center. You can mix a tad bit of purple with this red if you want it to just be really dark. Um, I'm just going to try and see how that works out. So here's my adding that in while it is still damp. So it gives me that nice little blend from dark to light. And I like how the color is kind of bleeding in. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm suddenly realizing I did not make accommodations for the yellow stamen. <laughs> Um, let's just see how that pans out. Maybe we can just have just a bit of yellow happening after it's dried. Um, and then it'll be a more potent yellow that we use. So we'll leave this for now. Let it dry up. Uh, we can go on to the leaves before we do some more. So the leaves are super easy. They're very fun to do. Um, gonna mix some of that green in this area and I am mixing my Mars Brown with this green as well to give me a nice warm uh, wooded I guess like a woodsy green is that a thing yeah because I don't like I find this greenish yellow from uh, or yellowish green from uh, St. Petersburg a bit too bright. I like my greens a lot more hooded and darker and rich. So this is the color I like. So I'm going to go with this and I'm going to use my number four for it. So. First things first, just dipping the tip in water so I get a better flow as I lay down the leaves. Notice the leaves are like, like three different areas. So the way I do it is first things first, creating some direction. So let's just have the leaf coming out this way. And now that I have given it some direction, I can, I'll do my center first. So one stroke two strokes, trying to leave some white space in between if you can, another stroke on the side, one more, another one this way, leave some space, 
and do a third and there you go you have your leaf it is that simple and they're actually quite fun to do and then I'm just going back in and adding some of the darker green to the center so it gives us like two shades of green which always adds something nicer to your paintings and we'll leave it at that um, and then now we can kind of continue doing more leaves if you want to keep practicing the leaves you can add some more um, but they're usually like in bunches and they kind of just come out uh, and even the florals are like in bunches so I think the first thing the next thing we can do is instead of the leaf let's add let's add some buds to it so I think I can have a bud coming out this way and if you've watched the video from th this past week the buds um, are very easy to do again yeah let's do one this way here and I'm going to create like an oval shape there we go and then I'm just going to take a little bit more of the green to get a slight variant of the green we have and I'll mix it in with uh, with the uh, with my favorite green from St. Petersburg which is the um, I think it's just called green yeah so it's slightly darker than what we have and I'm going to create the little bottom areas which is right there for it so let's just do that this way. And there we go, we have our little bud. I'm just gonna add some of the other green that I recently mixed into it just to kind of give it a nice blend. And then we can create another one just because there's these kind of happen in bunches. So let's just do one here. And this time notice I'm using the same green that we've done. You can just kind of like fluctuate the greens you use. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same one consistent. Like there's no real formal pattern. The more vari variations of color you have all over it kind of enhances the look and feel of your painting as a whole. Um, at least that's the way I do it. So you can feel free to do that. And I'm not going to give it a... a uh, what's the word? Twig? Sprig? I'm just going to have it float that way. And now we can create some more leaves as well protruding so then it kind of fills it up and gives it more shape and color, texture, everything. I'm just mixing some green on the side. All right, and let's do one more leaf. Uh, let's do one this way. And exactly like I said previously, we're going to do one stroke, two strokes, dipping in water, get another stroke in there, and a third. And there we go. We have our leaf. And keep in mind to add the uh, white space very intentionally. And just adding some darker color while it is still damp so it gives us a nice blend uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create some more leaves I, I really like painting these leaves they're just unless it doesn't go the way I want it to go so one stroke two stroke Dipping in water, third stroke. And that white space is just so exciting to me. I don't know. 
just to kind of see it in there is it just opens up the whole leaf as a whole and it's not your basic your basic leaves where it's just the two stroke the I like the three I like the shape it's just nice uh, all right let's do one more here coming out this way and I'm just trying to make sure that I don't um, mess up if it's still like my hand doesn't touch the wet color here oops careful with the strokes all right so this leaf was okay didn't turn out as great because it kind of touched touched that petal there but that's okay it's a loose style of painting it doesn't have to be super perfect um, it's okay so just adding some darker green to the center so that when it dries we have a nice variation again getting more of my darker green just putting it in there all right okay so i think we're good with the amount of leaves here we can do another flower uh let's try and do one So if this is the, say that's the flower we have, let's kind of have one coming out this way, perhaps. Um, so going back to my um, mop brush, I'm gonna get some of the color that I have mixed. And uh, here's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna try and make this flower a lot smaller than this one that we have going on. Um, and then off to the side this way. So I'm going to see, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous again to put down color <laughs> because these flowers are, while they're easy and fun to do, it's kind of really nerve wracking just to make sure you get the right, everything happening. All right. Did my first stroke, second stroke, third stroke. I'm going to mix a little bit of that red in with the purple. I'm leaving some white space in between. Adding some water to kind of get a nice fade here. And then I'll just do one more here. So this can be kind of facing upward. And now, taking my number four brush, I'm going to get some of that green that we have mixed. And I am going to do the bottom. Actually, before I do that, actually, no, yeah, just do the bottom because it would be nice to add some of that red as well. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white space between the green and the purple so I can add some of that red that we have going on leaving white space as well <clears throat> i'm just going to create that protruding stem at the bottom adding my darker <clears throat> green here as well just to have it blend in so finally washing off my green and i'm going to get some of the red And hopefully it's still damp. Just adding it at the bottom <clears throat> in tiny strokes. And then again, going back and I'm gonna very carefully add it so it doesn't blend in too much with the green. And there we go, just gonna leave it at that. And we can create some more of these little guys and also the, the leaves. So it's all a bit about like practicing these things here. Repetition really, lots of repetition. And all of them bunch together, right? So 
Notice now I'm doing this a lot lighter. My color variation is happening. Um, and I mentioned previously using slightly darker so that there's a variation or clear variation between the bud and the bits around it. So I'm adding some darker green and I'm gonna leave that. I like how it looks nice and faded compared to the other guys. Um, I'm gonna create one more over here on this side. Yeah, this one can be a lot smaller. And a little more faded so it's like less detailed compared to the other ones. and then just kind of attaching itself to the stem here. And we can leave it at that. Uh, next thing to do, I did say we would kind of have it go this way, like an arc, uh, but like I mentioned, you could also just have them be sporadic all over the place, because if you ever wanna scan them and use them in your projects, you can always it's easier to cut them out and use them separately as opposed to all of it being bunched together. Then you have to use the whole thing together. Um, okay, so let's do a leaf happening over here on this end. I think all of this is dry. So going this way, I'll do one stroke, two strokes third and fourth, just dipping my brush, the tip of my brush in water, one stroke, two strokes, and we have our leaf. And just adding some dark green to the green that I have done here, the leaf, and then leaving it that way can create a couple of more leaves happening here. One, two, three, four. And you can just taper the end as well just to kind of give it some flow. And then just adding darker color to the tip of the leaf where it attaches. Okay, I kind of messed that up here. But that's okay, we're doing loose painting, guys, so it doesn't have to be super intense. All right, then uh, I'll do another one over here on this end. And adding that green to the center of the leaf. And notice I'm just being very, like leaving a lot of white space in the stem itself. I think that's helpful uh, in kind of making this extra loose by not focusing too much on the details. Uh, and then let's do another floral protruding on this way. And then we can go uh, and create the, the actual centers. Like notice the centers are a lot more light or white compared to a yellow, but uh, we're doing a loose painting and this is our painting. We can do whatever colors we want as long as it looks pretty. And I think it looks pretty so far. So um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so I have my color already pre-mixed to the side and I think I want this just for the heck of the like I guess experimentation let's use the number four which is a straight edge tip to kind of see how the floral turns out and I'm going to use some more of the pinky stuff that we have here as opposed to the purple 
It's the exact same color mixes. It, this just has a little bit more of the matter lake compared to the violet. That's the only difference. This one has more of the violet in it, but it's from the same family, so it'll look, it'll blend well. So having this floral over here, let's just have one that's kind of open like this again, and this time we'll do it keeping in mind about the center stamen. So doing my one stroke, two strokes, three strokes. And then we'll do one more here. So notice I'm intentionally putting a lot more white space here. This is so that we can have our area for the stamen. And then you can add a little bit of the purple in there to just kind of blend it some more. And then one more here. And then finally using more water on this one, I'm just gonna create a very loose one here. And there we go, that's done. Uh, I just want the darker center, so for that I'm doing the red along with the violet. And so I'm going to use the darker purple that we have here. So again, this is just kind of showing you the variations you can get uh, in the colors, because these pretty florals are... They come in white, they come in purple, they come in mauve, like th different variations, right? Uh, I think I've even seen orange, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm just going to, I don't like how that is bleeding, so I'm just going to use my paper towel to dab at it. Take that away. And now finally we can do the center bit but I think I will allow it to dry a little bit more before we go back in. So we could probably start off with this center here. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using a combination of these two, which is the medium cadmium lemon and uh, the raw sienna. Uh, so I'll be mixing that on the side. So we'll have like the darker shadow area be the darker orange and then the lighter area be just the cadmium lemon. Um, let's see if I can actually have this overlap, if I use a thick enough version of the lemon, if it will work for my uh, overlapping over here. So I've got a lot more color on this, I'm literally taking the color directly from the color pan. And I'm just going to lightly create like a dotted straight linear kind of uh, shape. And it looks good, but I think it'll dry a lot lighter because it is watercolor. So I'm just going to go back in and get more color. And continue doing the same bit and then finally I'm gonna go get some of that orange I'm not I'm not taking off the color I'm just getting some orange directly from this and I'm going to get some of that nice it looks like a mango orange and I'm just gonna highlight it on the right hand side of this. And you don't want to overwork it, so just leave it as is. Uh, and now that we've done that, we can do this bit here. So again, we're, I've left that white space open here, so this, this time we can actually kind of, let's see how that goes. So. Doing my little dots, having it go upward this way, and then
trying to not overwork it, <laughs> failing. <laughs> and then I'm just going to use some of the orange, a very little bit of the orange, just to give a variant onto the side. And then I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, so this is what we have. Um, let's do a couple more leaves here and then I think we can like do some splatter. Oh, and then we have to do the little veins on the petals, so that'll be fun. So I'm just gonna do a few more leaves to kind of be with this floral here, but I really like how this light one turned out. Um, so there's another variation, I guess you can say. Um, let's do a leaf over here this way. And I'm doing a lighter leaf again. All right, so we did one there. I'm gonna mix some more green and brown. And putting in some of that darker green on here. I'll just do another leaf here, very loose version of it. And uh, yeah, I like how that looks. This is looking nice. Do another one here. Adding some water to the tip of my brush. Oh, see, now my strokes are getting a lot looser. So it really does take some practice and effort before you actually kind of go in and start doing stuff. There we go. All right, so like I've mentioned previously, you can totally do, um, like feel free to add these, like placement wise, wherever you want to. Don't You don't have to be following me exactly. I'm showing you how to do it, but you, I really would like if you guys kind of use your own imagination and what you like, what you don't like and place things accordingly. Um, and this way it kind of really will help you grow in terms of composition and I guess creative imagination in terms of what you um, like, don't like in your paintings as opposed to just following me. I'm just adding a few more buds because we have so many up here and then we have some here. I figure just a couple more here and then should be good to go. All right, okay, so we have a decent enough setting here. So now I think we can graduate and move on to adding the veins in the florals. I already have some of my leftover colors, so what I'm going to do is using my number four. Um, I'm going to get some of the purple. And I want it to be fairly watered down because these are going to be like stained little lines on the inside. It doesn't have to be super dark. Um, and this is the effect we're going for. If you have watched the video from last week, yeah. So it doesn't have to be crazy dark, but just minimal. So if you have number four, if you have a smaller brush, uh, because we need the tip to kind of do the lines. Uh, so use whatever you're comfortable with. We just need a very thin line or lines happening here. So I'm just gonna start creating the lines and they don't have to be 
they don't have to go all the way down they don't have to meet consistently it could be like little dotted lines like the way you see me doing it right now you do see me doing it right yeah it's on screen and this is what enhances the uh, and gives you definition in terms of which petal is where because they kind of envelop each petal if that makes any sense So you see how this petal goes this way and then the lines go this way, kind of closing it up. So you know where one starts and one where one ends. Uh, and we continue doing that. So clearly my hand is quite shaky as I'm doing this motion. So don't be scared if you find it hard to kind of maintain the lines they have to be quick and easy and loose uh, easy in the sense like not straining to get them perfect because this is the style of loose painting we're doing which allows us to make mistakes and is a lot more forgiving <laughs> compared to if we were doing something a little more realistic And same thing here. And there we go, we have the one floral ready. And now we can do this one here. And then we have one more here. And then finally we have the light one happening over here. last petal and there we go we are done so yeah hope you guys were able to follow along and do this um, oh yes one more thing before we before I check out the comments to see who's saying what uh, we'll do a splatter so I would ideally pick the green but for this, um, I'm going to be using, I'll use, I'll use a little bit of the yellow and then we'll use a little bit of the pink. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to mix some of the yellow on the side. You can have the combination of that, of the raw sienna and the cadmium lemon. And we'll just do a little bit of the splatter. This is just to highlight it. Uh, let's do it. Let's do some here. And then let's do some on this end. And then just a little bit on this end. You can also use a toothbrush for this. Uh, I'm just going to use the number four because I want tiny splatters for the yellow. And now we can use the... Oh, I never ended up using my Princeton, did I? I'll use the Princeton for this splatter. Uh, let's get some of the... I said the red, but I think the yellow is a good enough pop. Let's use some of the green. So I have some of the green pre-mixed, so I'm not getting... I'm not going to mix any more, so it'll be a lighter splatter. So I'm adding more water to it. So that like, it'll look like watercolor stains. 
So adding some here. Maybe I need a little bit more water. There you go. And in this direction some. And then a couple here. And then just some with the yellow at the top. And that's it. I won't do any more. So now when the, once these dry, they'll be a lot more lighter because there's more water in the green as opposed to the yellow, which is a little more potent in color. So yeah, so this is our very um, loose painting of the uh, Rose of Sharon. I hope you guys like this. Let me read the comments. If anyone had any questions, please do feel free to ask me right now and I can totally answer them. Uh, I'm just going to go up and see what people are saying. Oh, there's there's some talk about if Rose of Sharon and Hibiscus are related. And I think I had mentioned, I don't remember what I said, if it was a yes or a no, but yet the discussion's happening there. Uh, Rose of Sharon is a hibiscus. Yeah, I always thought the hibiscus was more of a tropical plant and being here, we get these growing like crazy wild in our backyard. So I figured maybe it wasn't. Also, the stamen of the hibiscus is a lot longer. So uh, Oh, thanks, Susan. That's so cute with the thumbs up. <laughs> thanks for all the thumbs up, guys. Uh, thanks, Sheila. I'm glad... I'm so glad every time I hear you're a wonderful teacher, I always think, wow, I never, ever thought in my entire life I would be able to teach properly. <laughs> but this is encouraging. Thank you, uh, Pamela. Uh, awesome. Thank you, uh, Lydia. Sorry, just got back. Yeah, for sure. So if you guys aren't able to view the whole thing right now, absolutely. Just, um, you know, the video will be posted soon enough, I guess, uh, and you can view it at your leisure anytime. Uh, you're welcome, Susan. Glad you found this helpful. Uh, hi, B. Welcome. I'm sure you can watch it later on, too. Thanks, Rithu. Glad you like the flowers. Uh, yes, I figured we mixed a couple of colors to get the colors. And again, this is more of an exercise to get you more used to the idea of instead of just using a straight green or using a straight purple, let's mix some colors and get some variations um, to the colors that we normally use. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Nancy. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Ginger. Thanks, Brittany. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, yeah, the whole idea, Nancy, with the whole me posting a video earlier on the week, giving you an idea of what we're going to do for Sunday, I just figured this way people are using the same skills they've learned twice intentionally and practice does make perfect or close to it. Perfection doesn't quite exist when you're loose style watercolor painting. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Pamela. Yeah, I just got to keep on practicing that white space, guys. Sometimes even I struggle with it, so. Okay, awesome, great. Hi, Zanette, Jill, awesome, thank you. Thanks, Dolan. Hello from Houston. Hi, Lillian, thank you. Okay, awesome, Debbie, thanks so much. All right, uh... Sweet. Yes. Okay. Susan's asking, can you do a lesson in masking fluid? Yes, I totally can. I actually have done one. Actually, I've done two. Uh, and it's where we we had we had written a word and then we painted florals around it. And that was actually pretty.
pretty fun. You can find that in... It, I did a live and then I did a weekly one as well. So you should look that up or just send me a message and I can send you the link to it if you can't find it in my listings. Awesome. Okay, I don't think anyone has any more questions. So thanks so much for joining me, guys. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. Share this video on your social media channels if you found this helpful. I really like how this turned out better than how it turned out uh, earlier on the week. So, yeah. All right, guys. And, oh, last thing. Please send me your work through Instagram or Facebook. Uh, I love getting posts from you guys. Uh, and I love seeing how you guys do and go along. So again, any questions you have, struggling with anything, just let me know. And maybe I can focus more on those things for our live sessions. All right. So thanks, guys, for joining and have a lovely Sunday. Bye.